All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started if that's okay. This is three after. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. I'm so thankful to be here. Um, I was honored to be asked to give a presentation to you all on self care and Zoom fatigue. So, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Lauren Mangus. I am in the College of Education on the third floor as part of the Theoretical and Behavioral Foundations um, Division. I am the director of the School and Community Psychology Program. And I've had many experience over a decade of working in the schools as a school psychologist. And now I train school psychologists. And I also do private practice. So I, I'm a licensed psychologist as well. Um, and this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, it's been really important um, in the training that I work with as far as students and other people with their mental health and wellness as a therapist. And it's really important that we do take care of ourselves uh, at all times, but in particular right now during the pandemic, because this is just such an unusually challenging time. And I know so many of us are feeling just overwhelmed, fatigued. Um, and I just, you know, really want to take a moment to thank all of you for showing up for yourselves and being here and being present. Um, that's, that's really, really important. So today, what I'd like to do um, throughout the presentation is do a check-in to see kind of where everyone is at. Um, then I want to go into as far as self-care, what it is and why is it important? Um, because sometimes there are misconceptions about self-care. So I want to be able to have a little bit of research and theoretical kind of underpinnings for all of you. Um, then it's really important to me that you all have some tools and activities to be able to do, um, that you have some resources for you to, to walk away today with. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to talk about Zoom fatigue. So some of the causes, um, ways to support our own personal bandwidth. And then also to making the most of your space at home. Um, and then hopefully if time permits, I wanna be able to have opportunities for everyone to kind of engage with each other and talking about challenges, successes and needs. It's really important because this is again, such an unusual time that we're all going through a very similar experience. We're in a crisis right now um, and it's an ongoing crisis. So usually crises are kind of more acute and very situation specific. and and generally short-lived, but this seems to be kind of the never-ending year. And I know a lot of us are kind of feeling like, what day is it? Every day is Blur's Day. It's really kind of, you know, confusing. Um, so hopefully today it'll make a little bit more sense and be validating for some of those feelings that you all are experiencing. So for the first poll um, that our team has for you, I'm, I'm curious on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being amazing, how are you currently feeling? So right now we're having um, a lot of you know, difficulties, not just with the pandemic, but we have social unrest, we have political challenges, there's stressors all over. So, I am not sure who was going to be doing the poll or activating it and doing the questions. Perfect, thank you so much. So if you can go ahead and click on your choice. And if you want to type it in the chat too, that's completely fine. This makes it a little bit more anonymous. All right, and I'm not sure if everyone has that and if we can see the results. Perfect. So I'm not surprised by this. There, you know, about a third of you are satisfied, um, you know, a little bit less than that sad and doubtful, and almost half of you are unhappy. And, and right now it is hard. We're experiencing a lot of grief and loss. Um, you know, grief is not just necessarily about, you know, people that we care about that are no longer here, um, things that we had, you know, the pre-pandemic life, we're grieving that, we're, we're grieving not being able to see our colleagues, our friends, our family, there's just so many losses that we have at this time. Um, so I'm hoping that you all can honor those feelings because they're, they're really real. So as far as that, to, to help us to feel better and to be able to lean into wellness, you know, as far as self-care, this is taking care of ourselves. There are two pillars to self-care, so personal and professional. When we talk about self-care, we tend to think more in the personal domain, um, but professional, there, there is that type of self-care as well, and that's kind of more occupationally and um, 
intellectually focused. So things that kind of fill our bucket professionally. But as far as personal self-care, there's physical. So things like how much we get, you know, not necessarily exercise, but movement, that's really important. Quality sleep, um, quality eating, making sure that we're staying hydrated. Those things are physical self-care. And then psychological, emotional. Um, so things like being compassionate to ourselves, making sure that we have routines, kind of schedule, those things help us to feel a little bit more balanced. Um, and then social, of course, which a lot of us are feeling the, the challenges with this for sure too. And that we're missing out on a lot of connection, both physical and emotional connection with others. And we're not able to see our friends and family in the manner that we would like to. And even some of us that are working from home with family, it's difficult because again, we feel like we're everywhere and nowhere. And I noticed too, in my private practice, I have to you know, encourage families to schedule time to connect with each other because that's important because we're depending it caught up a lot in our own personal work. And then also to the, the fourth component of personal self-care is leisure and spiritual. So this can be faith-based, but it's also to being, you know, inter interconnected with nature, being mindful, doing creative things. Those things are pretty, pretty, pretty important. And so why is self-care important? So of course, when we think of self-care, we're like, oh, I don't feel that great. I need to do something about it. That's more intervention. But what I would like to encourage us, all, all of us to do is make sure that we're taking care of ourselves ongoing as a means of prevention that helps us to increase our bandwidth to be able to help mitigate stress. So when we're able to take in, to engage in self-care um, regularly, it helps with our immune system functioning because when we're stressed, we get more cortisol, it makes us ill, and it's just, it is really challenging. We don't feel that great physically and, and mentally. So with that too, is we really want to just enhance our overall well-being. So making sure that we're taking care of ourselves helps to lower stress. Physically, we're healthier. Our immune system is able to tackle more illnesses and ailments, which is highly critical during this time. And then also too, you know, it supports our mental health. And I really would like to, you know, give us permission to recognize that we are human beings first and whatever professional role we have second. And I think sometimes I notice with people that work in education and my experience and, and all of us, sometimes we, we forget that. And it's really important. Um, you know, we would love to all be superhumans um, and, and tackle all of it on, but we have to really show ourselves some compassion that we are humans. And I have a visual here. I don't know if um, any of you have read the book, The Giving Tree. Um, but I always like to kind of use this example because if we continue to give all away of ourselves, we're just left for a with a stump for everyone to sit on. So it's really important that we're nurturing ourselves and not giving away too much of ourselves and taking care of our own reserves. Because if we are struggling with taking care of ourselves, then it's hard to take care of other people too. Um, and this is really important, especially in times of crisis. So as I was kind of alluding to before, in this year of 2020, we kind of feel like we're everywhere and nowhere. Like I was saying, every day kind of feels like Blur's Day. Our boundaries have been very much skewed. We don't have the, the transitional times being in our car, traveling to and from work or other, you know, obligations that we had, uh, family obligations, you know, taking kids to, um, you know, different athletic activities or, or other you know, um, extracurriculars, those kind of things have, have dwindled or, you know, have looked a little bit different. So what we definitely are seeing is that there's definitely a toll on mental health. That is very apparent. Um, American Psychological Association just came out with um, the recent Stress in America survey. They do this annually. They've done it a lot more during this time. And 80% of the population is incredibly stressed. And this goes for parents, this goes for everyone, all adults. So we are definitely all feeling it. And it is impacting individuals well being. It's also impacting our memory because we don't have those environmental cues to kind of help us to remember things because especially if we're working and living from the same kind of location, it makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, and plus we're stressed too. And, and, and that does hinder our, our memory and our functioning. And then also to those ecological stressors. So talking about these different contexts, we have institutional racism, we have social unrest, our political climate, people are stressed about what next week's election. That is very real. 
the economy is stressing people out, finances, there's just so many compounded stressors. And then also too, again, that, that rhythm and routine that we're really not experiencing. I mean, thank goodness that we have the rhythm of night and day and even, you know, our seasonal changes in Michigan, but it's still really complicated. So what I'm seeing as far as pandemic impact right now and why self-care is important, and this is based on my experiences with students and working with um, different community settings, whether it's school or clinical work, my own field work, working with colleagues. I've done different things with groups nationally and even statewide. Um, there's just a lot of anxiety, a lot of worrying, um, a lot of sadness, as some of you had alluded to earlier. Um, stress, obviously, that's a big takeaway. Fatigue, just kind of feeling blah, a bit malaise. Um, and then a lot of sleeping and eating disturbances. So some people are, you know, having a schedule, remembering to eat. Some people are feeling that they're, they're grazing a lot. Um, I've heard people say that they've um, earned their quarantine 15. Um, you know, that, that's a real thing. And then sleeping too, there's a lot of reports of insomnia, um, whether it's middle of the night insomnia or difficulty falling asleep. Um, a lot of people are having feelings of inadequacy, you know, lack of productivity too, and self-doubt. And then many of us are feeling isolated, so socially and even physically, um, especially to, uh, you know, for, for those of us that are working from home, we're not able to see our colleagues in an organic way. There's not those water cooler conversations. So why is self-care important? Um, as I alluded before, it's important to help us combat stress, but it really helps us to become more resilient so we can recover more quickly from difficulties you know, that we're experiencing. Um, again, it, I, I cannot emphasize this enough how much it helps to enhance and promote our mental health and wellness. It also prevents burnout and compassion fatigue. So in our jobs, so it helps us uh, to take care of ourselves professionally, but also to even in our own family situations or being a friend, there's burnout and compassion fatigue that can occur there too, as far as, you know, being present with others. Um, Self-care, we know that it increases our uh, quality of life. So people have improved life satisfaction when they engage in self-care. Uh, and, and this is something that's very highly individualized. So one thing that is self-care for one person may not equate for something for someone else. And it's important that we don't compare how we engage in self-care to others, because for someone it might look like, you know, taking a bath, um, getting a mani or petty. I mean, some of those are kind of the things that we will read about and think about, but self-care in the, in the days of the pandemic, I truly feel are like making sure that you're fed, making sure that you've showered, you know, that you're, like, you're clean. <laughs> um, just, I mean, making sure that you have your basic needs when you're have your workspace. Do you have water nearby? Do you have a snack nearby? Are you taken care of? Um, that's, that's really, really, really important. And these are all things that again are preventative. And these can be things that are very short. We can do self-care anywhere. So even, you know, if you listen to uh, your favorite song or you do a stretch to your favorite song or just working on focusing on your breath, that could be something that we're doing even during our meetings, making sure that we're sitting comfortably, being aware and being present with ourselves. Those things can be really vital and helpful. So I do wanna take a time before I go into the second poll, um, Christine and Kristen, if there's anything in the chat that you saw that I should kind of check in with. No, I don't think there's anything specific that came up. We're just kind of okay. chatting back and forth. Great. No Thank you. And I appreciate you, you guys doing that. I, I just, it, it, there was a lot of chat going on, so I couldn't really monitor all of it. But I, I'm curious to know, uh, for the second poll, what has been the biggest challenge for all of you during this time, during the pandemic? So is it managing time or finding balance, sleep? Is it taking care of yourself as far as nutrition, hydration? Are you feeling isolated, that lack of social connectedness? Is it more your mental health and wellness? Are you feeling that stress, that sadness, that worry? Or are you, are you most concerned about your productivity? All right, so most people, mental health. So there's also too quite a bit with managing time and having that balance. 
Some are reporting nutrition and hydration, right? Some are feeling the isolation, lack of connectedness and productivity. And I would, I would say too, that, you know, a lot of us are probably experiencing multiple um, of these challenges and it's not unusual and it can change from day to day, minute to minute. You know, one thing, if we check in with ourselves, you know, we might realize that, oh, this is most challenging this week or next week it might be sleep, you know, especially with, with the time change. That's another challenge. So I do have some things and you all are going to get um, a copy of the slides. So please feel free to, you know, use these. I try to make it simple um, as, as possible because I know we are all inundated with so much information. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I gave to you all was more, you know, bite-sized kind of palatable things that you can kind of do without putting so much stress on your eyes and reading if possible. Um, so I, I do, I'm a huge NPR um, nerd. I'm self-proclaimed NPR nerd. And I love they have this Life Kit series. And it's been really great because they've been doing different things that really focus on like overall kind of well-being and different topics. Um, and it's they're about 15 minutes on average and it gives you strategies and they're really research-based. They have a lot of professionals that kind of talk about different things too. So I curated some of these just so that if you guys are interested, you can listen to the podcast. They do have the, the reading too online if you want, if you prefer to read. I just think it's a, it's a little bit good because we're all overwhelmed in different ways. So figuring out if you want some auditory information or if you want it to be visual. Um, but as far as managing time and balance, so for those of you that were like, oh, this is the biggest challenge, biggest things, self-compassion, allowing ourselves permission that we, we, we are putting ourselves uh, uh, in such an unjust way, having these high expectations that our, you know, time management and what we do day to day, we're comparing it to our pre-pandemic selves. And it's really important that we're recognizing that we're in a crisis right now. It's, I equate it to almost like, you know, if you were, if we were all living in an area where a hurricane was coming, or if there was a huge chemical spill, or if there was um, uh, another inclement weather event, just like fires, which these things are happening across, you know, our country and globe. So with that, having some reasonable expectations for us and being compassionate and recognizing when it's, when it's good enough, when, when we can kind of turn it off and that speaks to some boundary stuff, but managing, managing our time and just being, being forgiving with, with the realities of what's going on. Also too, making sure that you're scheduling, uh, you know, taking good care of yourself, having start and stop times. That's been a challenge for a lot of people too, to turn it off. Some people I know have had to remove email from their phones just because that's a lot of our communication these days now too. I mean, I'm sure plenty of you feel like you're just answering emails all day. I know I definitely do. I mean, it's like nonstop. So I have to make sure that I kind of say, okay, after nine o'clock, I'm completely done. Or, you know, I, cause I work on the later and so my classes are in the evening. So maybe I won't respond um, until 10 a.m. You know, so I have to kind of give myself a little bit of window there too. And, you know, those structures and routines are just really powerful. So if you, you know, make sure you take a break for lunch every day or make sure you eat dinner and, you know, working in some movement. So whether it's a stretch break, whether we were talking before even um, transitions between meetings, making sure that you, you know, get up and stretch before you enter the next meeting, because sometimes we can just sit and just power through one Zoom after another, making sure that you have those reset breaks, because that's typically what we would do if we were in person is we get up go to another, you know, our, our next meeting, and we'd have that transitional passing time, we'd have that movement. So making sure that you kind of curate those transitions for you are very helpful. Um, as far as sleep, even though none of you uh, did endorse any sleep challenges, there are some different things too. If you do need some tips or, or want some nighttime rituals for good sleep hygiene, um, also too, there's some cognitive behavioral techniques for if you are experiencing a lot of worries at night, because some people are flooded with these. So these are really, really good um, supports for that. And then nutrition and hydration. So of course, making sure that you eat, whether you need to set an alarm on your phone or have some kind of scheduled time to eat, planning ahead can be helpful, making sure that you have you know, you, I know some people hold themselves to high standard as far as meal prepping. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, but just making sure that you have some balanced foods. 
it's it's really important that you're you're balancing all of it, making sure you're having your vitamins and minerals, making sure you're getting some sunlight to get some vitamin D. That's really important too. And like I said, making sure that you have water near you or whatever nice beverages you would like. Um, it's important. And for those of you that are feeling isolated and that lack of social connectedness, like I said, a lot of times I'm finding that I have to, even with family, schedule uh, family time, family date nights. Um, same with uh, partners, having to kind of schedule the time to connect with your partner, connect with one child, having almost, you know, that scheduled time where you're being fully present with each other. That's important. Um, we need to be able to plug in though, and also to unplug when necessary. So I think some of us too are feeling a little fatigued, especially if we have meeting after meeting and it's a lot of people time. So recognizing too, uh, if we need to unplug socially, that that is okay. But just ways to kind of feel connected still, whether, you know, it's, uh, you know, I make it a point for myself personally to, to check in with a friend at least every other day, different, different person, just to kind of stay somehow connected. Um, because that, that is important. And then scheduling, you know, whether it's um, an outside walk with a colleague or friend, um, scheduling, you know, tea or coffee time. I know people have done that and that's just a way to kind of still feel connected. And also too, we, we do see mental health benefits to phone call. And that can be a nice way too, where you're not having to visually have some stimulation and input as we're all Zooming. That's another way to connect with people that can be helpful. And as far as mental health, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this on the next slide. Um, but it's really important that we connect with ourselves and that we are aware of how we're feeling and asking, what do I need right now? That's really important. Like, am I thirsty? Am I hungry? Sometimes we, our body lets us know when it's almost too late, you know, because we might feel, you know, a little irritable or tired or just kind of woozy. And just making sure that you're kind of checking in periodically and, okay, how am I doing? How am I feeling? What, what do I need right now? And again, with the productivity piece, that self-compassion is so vital, so critical in having a schedule. So for boundaries, this is a really important form of self-care. We were kind of talking about this at the beginning here. Um, but this really helps us to support balance, managing time and productivity. It's hard for us to say no. It's hard. It's very, very difficult. There is a nice life kit on saying no to that you, you can, you know, be able, I always say love says no. That's, that's kind of like a way because we can't take it all on. And sometimes if I know I cannot give my 110% that I like to give, it's not, uh, I'm not going to do whatever that ask is justice. So it, it's important to kind of know that too, and know our own bandwidth. We need to prioritize our tasks and and be able to turn things off without feeling that shame or guilt. It's difficult. And, you know, I, it's important because we all tend to like to help others and feel that connection. Um, but if we say no to an, an opportunity, that's another opportunity for someone else to be able to help too. So we, I, I kind of always have that mindset that we're all in this together. And it's helpful to kind of have those boundaries. And we respond well to, to other people that set some boundaries too. And as far as mental health supports, gosh, I could go on and on about this, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna give you a couple of highlights about ways to support our mental health. Some people find journaling to be helpful. Um, again, self-compassion, I cannot emphasize this enough. Give yourself permission to grieve and feel the feels that's emoting. So allow yourself to have these emotions, they're fleeting, they don't define you, they, they pass. This It will pass too, but you have to uh, honor it. It's, it's important because that's it's real. We're feeling a lot of different feelings and that's part of us being human. And another thing too, is we say in the psychology world, don't should on yourself. So don't don't say that, you know, you, you should do this. I should be doing this. I should be running 30 minutes a day. Uh, you know, make sure that you have some self-compassion and what, what are some things that are reasonable? And I think too, sometimes we do compare our, ourselves to others. And even at the beginning of this, I saw some people make amazing, for example, sourdough starters. And so I would tell my students, don't compare yourself to your neighbor and their amazing sourdough starter. If, if you know, you went outside and took a nice deep breath and that was your self-care, great. So whatever is good for us. And we just need to be compassionate that way. Gratitude can do wonders. So I love to do a three good things exercise. You can do this in the morning. You can do it at night. 
just three good things, especially at night, three good things that happened in the day. Or you can do it weekly too, what, what, however frequently you need that, but it does help to boost your mood. And then importantly too, focusing on what we can control. There are a lot of things that are out of our control right now. And a lot of us, especially working in higher ed, we're used to being able to have agency in being able to get things done, accomplish things. And it's really difficult because we have all these barriers right now. So it's really important. I have to remind myself of this quite often. Okay, what is within my power to do? What is one thing that I can do to take a step to make this happen and forward? Or even can I make it happen? Is that a realistic ask of myself or someone else of me? That's really, really important. Um, also too, therapy. This, I, I will tell you, there are therapists that are out there. People are doing telehealth services. It's been a really great thing. Um, some people in this area have a long waiting list, but right now with telehealth options, you can find providers in the whole state of Michigan, which is really kind of really interesting and cool. Um, and it's, and it's important. Um, I do know that, um, therapists, I know their top profession sometimes uh, tend to be nurses and teachers, um, and other people in education. So it, it's very common and, and, and therapy too, it's, it's, again, I, I want to emphasize that prevention piece it's not just when something is wrong. It's a way to kind of keep us healthy. You know, it's, it's just, again, like ongoing self-care. Mindfulness, being present in the moment is important. So being present with what we're uh, experiencing through our senses. What am I looking at? What am I feeling? What am I, you know, if you're eating something, how does this taste? How does the texture feel? Being very much in, in the moment. Um, also to guided imagery and deep breathing. You, there's so much that's available through YouTube and looking up videos or different things that you like as far as guided imagery or meditation can be helpful um, and even different deep breathing. Um, one thing, even with breathing, that can be very helpful when we're stressed. It's, it's called five finger breathing. I call it like almost take five. Um, I have this picture in a couple, like toward the end of the presentation, but as, as you kind of trace your finger, you breathe in as you go up your fingers and then breathe out going down and then so you breathe in and then out breathe in and out and then you do that all the way to your thumb and i always start with my pinky on the outside because i want to bring calmness toward me so i'm always trying to to intentionally bring it toward myself so that even a lot of people say oh my gosh after three fingers of doing that i feel so much calm more calm and the beauty of that is you can do that in person, even in a meeting, you can have your hands on the table. No one will know what you're doing. But even on a Zoom call, if you're feeling stressed out, need to recenter, that is a great way, a great just uh, a quick tip and tool for you to use. And then also, too, again, we're, we're experiencing so much uncertainty right now. And if you're wanting to learn more about coping with uncertainty, there, again, is a nice podcast on that as well, because um, it is difficult. So what I would like for all of you, if you are open and willing, and this is a personal activity for yourself. Um, I think it's, I am always a visual person. So I'm like, okay, let's send ourselves with our, wh where, what is our direction at? How are we doing right now? What's our own self-care compass? So you can do this, just draw on a quadrant of paper uh, and making sure that your, your quadrants are physical, that's psychological, emotional, social, leader, spiritual. And then you can do a self-rating. So you can either just do a, a plus or a minus sign, plus if you think that you're feeling good about that area, minus if you know it's not going well, it needs some improvement, or you can do like a traffic light, like a red, green, yellow system um, that can be helpful. And then, you know, once you rate yourself, then it's important for you to think about what are some actionable items that you can do to lean into self-care. So for those ones that you rated yourself as a minus on, or those that were red, if you do the traffic light, it's important for you to kind of check in with yourself and like kind of what you need. It's, it's kind of like, you know, in our, in our cars, we have a, a dashboard that lets us know what our car needs. We don't necessarily have that. We have to, we have to kind of make, make our own internal dashboard know when we're kind of on empty, right? Or if we need an oil change or what, whatever the case is, it's important for us to be connected with ourselves. And this is, this is how we can kind of make that visible. So I would look at this almost as your, as your dashboard. And what's great about this is you can do it quickly or, you know, you can even think about it. I, I always find it helpful to draw it out 
and check on yourself regularly. How are you doing? So this could be a thing that you do daily. If you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to check on myself frequently, totally fine. Um, if you're feeling discomfort, if it's more intermittent, and you could do this weekly too, but I would encourage you at least right now to do it periodically, just to see how you're doing and what your needs might be and how you can kind of make things a little more actionable. I'm gonna pause here if there's any questions or anything else in the chat before I go into the Zoom fatigue part. Um, I think it's just sort of sharing thoughts. One person brought up square breathing. So that yep. was something that came up as a technique that people are using. Uh, just some comments in general about um, regarding the second poll, people are seeing that maybe personal time should be added as a struggle in there or a couple of the, the different struggles seem to be tied together. And, uh, but mostly just kind of sharing strategies. So please continue to share things as we kind of move through. But again, I don't think there were specific okay. questions. Everyone's sort Great. of dealing with the questions as we go in the chat. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for your participation. And I think it's it's so great to connect with colleagues and others because so many of us are feeling this way and it's important to have that validated. Um, and, I, and I do find with all the presentations that I've done and check-ins with professionals that are out there, um, having that time to connect with each other has been really powerful for people and really important. So I, I do, and, and I'm looking at the time because I, I, I have 45 minutes and then I wanted us to be able to do a breakout, um, unless Christine and Kristen, you guys have other things that you want to add. Okay. Um, but for Zoom fatigue and other pandemic considerations, I thought it would be, you know, of course, important. And that's, that's why most of you kind of are here in addition to the self-care piece. So with Zoom fatigue, I want us to know and, and, and recognize this occurs whether we're in a pandemic or not. Okay, so people get tired because, I mean, there's screen time, there's reasons why we have physician recommendations, medical recommendations about limiting the amount of screen time and, and um, making sure that it's not dysregulating our, our sleep wake cycle, especially if we have it, you know, too close to bedtime. But it's difficult right now. So a lot of us are making sure that we're, again, having compassion and grace to ourselves and toward others. Um, I have a lot of parents that are like, oh my gosh, my kid's on... Time, I'm like, we're in a crisis. It is okay. We're all doing the best that we can. It's adopting that good enough mantra. As long as everyone goes, to, I have the, I have the thought, as long as everyone goes to bed feeling safe and loved, great. That is a successful day to me. Um, and, and that's really important as far as when we look at even, I don't know if any of you have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but that's making sure that, you know, sleep, nutrition, um, physicality, those foundational pieces, but then safety and security is important too in that connectedness. So those kind of go up the tiers too. So it, it is important that we are considerate of, you know, our own personal bandwidth and how, you know, it, and it's ironic because when we talk about bandwidth, we're talking about technology too, um, but we need to be considerate of our own bandwidth with, with our own stress and resiliency, right? And some things to kind of affirm how we're all feeling tired is we're having, like I was saying earlier, to communicate a lot. We're having to be way more intentional with people um, as far as conversations, to initiate them, to respond to them. We are having to formalize our check-ins more. We don't get to have those informal, organic, water cooler conversations where we pass someone or see them in the bathroom and kind of check in that way. We're having to be much more intentional and directed. So we're having to schedule things more. Like I said, we're having to respond to emails. We're having so many meetings. I, I hear so many people like, oh my gosh, there's so many meetings, phone calls, video calls, all kinds of communication. And then for those of us that are teaching class, we have that to boot on top of all of it. So it's a lot. It's, it's definitely a lot. It's information overload for us. And we really need to be considerate of that. Um, information overload, we have, you know, not only the audio taking information in, visual information, right? And then also to our own internal states. So our physiological, so even like if we have increased heart rate or shallow breathing, those kind of things too, that can sometimes be a little bit alarming, especially if we're having some stress and anxiety. And then also too, what is, what is our brain telling us? You know, how are we doing psychologically? That's internal information. And then I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the news and media. 
Um, one thing that I've suggested with a lot of my uh, adults that I work with and a lot of my parents of the kids that I work with are, are educators, whether it's in higher ed or K through 12, actually, and it's a lot about um, moderating our, our intake. And sometimes if, if it's too stimulating to have it visual and auditory, cut, pairing it down to one thing, whether you have to listen to it just on the radio or a podcast or, you know, making sure that you're just reading the news or checking in and making sure that whatever news thing, it's not too, not too uh, jolting and alarming. Um, so as far as bandwidth, other things that are kind of detracting from our bandwidth and reducing it um, is even the technology difficulties we're having because we're having to share our internet with others. Oh, you know, we're using our home internet. We're not all using university internet. That definitely is decreasing bandwidth and it's frustrating, right? Because we get Zoom freezes and other things too. And that actually takes a little more psychologically for us to, you know, attend to what was said. Um, we have to kind of catch up a little bit or if things, you know, there's unexpected things that happen. I remember I was teaching a class last semester and my power went out. So there was that. And I had to, on the fly, uh, FaceTime a student so they could put me into the Zoom. You know, so we're having to constantly kind of think on the fly. Um, also, too, other things that detract uh, our bandwidth or reduce it is multitasking during Zooms. So this actually, even though we think we're being more productive, it decreases our productivity long term because it hinders us being present and fully engaged, and then we might miss some stuff. So I encourage you to be fully present with that because that multitasking that you think you're doing, long-term, we don't see the benefits of that. And then also stress, so stress level, like I was saying, doing some breathing, whether you like square breathing, there's all kinds of visuals for, for breathing. However it feels good for you, I encourage you to do that. Um, again, we're having to increase our effort to read uh, nonverbal behaviors and to be intentional about our communication. We have never had to, uh, you know, really read so many behaviors in a two-dimensional fashion. We usually have people's body features that kind of tell us, like, what is happening? How are they doing? Are we coming? Or are we going? Just there's those kind of, you know, visual cues that we have for other from others nonverbally. We have to be more intentionally focused. Like I, I know when I'm teaching, I have to really monitor my students and check in a little bit more intentionally with them. It's not as um, innate. Also too, we're having, because we're sitting for a long time, we're having to have increased effort for our posture um, and ergonomics. We, we all don't necessarily have, and I'll speak for myself here possibly, but the best um, chair to sit in. I've had to get a couple of different chairs so that I have something that's comfortable because it's not my nice office chair with those quality ergonomic features. And that can be really difficult too, because if we're not sitting well and don't have the appropriate posture, it really decreases our, our alertness and focus. So it does decrease our bandwidth because we're having to put in more effort for, for, you know, just to sit properly or to sit that we can be alert. There's also a lack of movement that also is kind of reducing our bandwidth and um, a lack of changing scenery. And I call this zoom down almost, I don't know if you guys have heard of sundown when people, you know, that are in hospitals, this happens too. Like if you're in Vegas, you kind of don't know what time it is because there's no clocks around, there's no windows. So you kind of get disoriented in that way. And if we don't have a change in scenery, we start to feel that way. It's like, everything feels like Groundhog's Day, but like everything's the same, but yet it's also different right? Every day there's a new fire to put out. And even, I don't know if some of you can see Mark's background, but it's like the, this is fine meme. <laughs> it's totally true. Like uh, every day I'm like, I'm like, well, what, what fire needs to be extinguished today? It's kind of crazy. And thankfully I have my coffee um, in there. But as far as protective factors for bandwidth, so things to, to improve our bandwidth, I talked about nutrition and hydration, making sure that you guys take breaks, from any kind of stimulator input, there's things that I have to say, okay, I'm done peopling for the day. I, I, I have to take care of myself and that's okay. I have to honor that. And I will be very transparent and vulnerable with you all because it's it's important to, to give ourselves permission for that. That's healthy. I need to be my personal best for my students and for my work that I do. So it's important that I shut it down if I'm too, if I need a break. Getting movement getting fresh air. And it could, movement can just be stretching. It could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing a couple yoga stretches. It could be doing some wall push-ups. It could be um, playing with your pet. You could be dancing to your favorite song. It doesn't have to be 
what we stereotypically think about exercise and physical activity. And just lean into it. Any little thing that you can do. Social connection, like I was saying earlier, um, phone calls are great. Of course, three, three dimensional is the best if you can so socially distance, or I should say physically distance with others. Um, making sure that you nurture yourself with your interests and hobbies that are outside of your work are helpful. Boundaries I talked about as far as the mental boundaries and kind of saying no to things and putting things kind of in places for scheduling, but even physical boundaries. I have a, I've had a motto during the pandemic of kind of what happens at the table stays at the table. That's important. I try to make sure that my work is a physical divider for it. So whether you have a table, whether you have a carpet square for you, that that's your work zone is important. And we've seen too, it, it's important. I try to um, encourage my students if they're able to um, not do their work in their room. Um, it's, it's important. So you have your, your sleep area should be your safe, sacred space. So making sure that, and I'm guilty of this as well, check my email sometimes in bed, like last minute kind of a thing, but it's important to make sure that your bed, that that is your safe, sacred space to fall asleep. Um, also too, having hope. It is so important for us to have hope. I mean, there, you know, there's always a, usually a rainbow at the end of the storm and we have to kind of think about that. And, you know, of course, I know some people are being cautiously optimistic right now. We have to celebrate those silver linings and look for those kind of hoorays. It, it is important, those, those good things, because there is um, an ancient proverb that says crisis equals danger plus opportunity. So there are opportunities in the crisis. You know, I've seen a lot of opportunities um, with people connecting in different ways, um, people that haven't connected in, in like a long time, or even, you know, some opportunities with, with my students being able to provide telehealth services to people all in Michigan. That those are some really good silver linings with it. And, and we have to really grasp onto those. I'll, my garden, I don't think has ever looked as good because I've tried to get outside. So there's some silver linings to things, you know, and then self-compassion, you know, that is really powerful and important having empathy and compassion for others too, as well as ourselves. We're not always the kindest to ourselves. So as far as making the most of our space, um, I always like to think about um, <laughs> how to, you know, my, my work environment does that reflect what's going on in here? Because oftentimes it kind of does. And if I, things are cluttered outside, then I'm like, oh man, I gotta kind of kind of reconnect and check in with that. So making sure things are kind of tidy. I try to tidy things up at the end of the day, making sure I clear out my whole space so that when I come in the next day, it can kind of be you know appropriate or that it feels good to me. So some things that are kind of basic and sometimes we forget about this, but it's important to honor your space as having appropriate lighting, having you know boundaries, uh, I will tell you, it was difficult with my family at my house, um, knowing when I was on Zoom calls or in sessions or what was going on, I was almost having to do an open and close sign, like a storefront almost, like you can't come in this area or not. And having kind of almost like a traffic light system, like, hey, like green, you can kind of come in or red, I'm in a meeting or, I'm, uh, or yellow, I'm possibly available, but not first. So whatever, whatever you need to do with your household and having kind of those boundaries to physically control organization. It's hard because we don't have our nice offices for those of us that are working from home. So making sure that we have, you know, all of our filing supplies, uh, being able to prioritize things, how, however you have that space that whatever is going to work for you. And it might change from week to week. That's okay. Or semester to semester. Uh, again, comfortable and sharing desk. Uh, there was a really good podcast on ergonomics. Um, I learned a lot from it. Um, and it's, it's just really important to make sure that you have specific like leveling as far as where, where your arms are mentioned to your chair, that stuff does matter so that you can kind of support yourself sitting up. Those things are important. Um, and I, and I have to kind of be mindful of that too, for myself, um, Another thing too that's important with, with Zoom, um, two things, two things that I would say, keeping your camera at eye level, this helps for comfort and connection. We're not putting as much strain because if we're having to tilt our head up or tilt our head down, that creates more strain because our body's having to put more energy in an unnatural kind of focusing. So making sure that your camera's at eye level. So whether you need to put your laptop or whatever your device is on an ironing board or a pile of books or whatever, or adjust things, 
do what I, no one else will be able to see it, but you. So just make sure for you, it's at a comfortable level. And that helps with connection too, because then people can look at your eyes a little bit more. It's more natural. And then another thing that you will, I encourage you to do is making sure that you have the multi tile, the gallery, the Brady Bunch feature, I call it so that everyone's, you know, heads are in smaller squares, because otherwise, if you have just the big face of the person talking, and I hope no one has me on that right now. Um, I don't think so when there's a screen share. Um, you, you don't want to be, uh, I call it the Wizard of Oz feature. It's terrifying. It really is like that's unnatural. And it actually um, uh, really connects with the fear center of our brain because it's such an unnatural thing. It's, it's, so we want to make sure that we're supporting our own mental health too. So I, I would say do yourself a favor, make sure you have that uh, gallery feature and making sure your camera's at eye level. So good timing, I think. Um, before we do breakouts, I do have an edible uh, Google Doc that just to kind of record some things. And it, you know, of course it's anonymous, but I, I'd like for us to go into breakout rooms and be able to record in this Google Doc. This will just be helpful for, for the team to have as far as future things and what kind of your needs are. But the three things that I would like you guys to focus on in your breakout are one, what are some of the biggest challenges during the pandemic that you're facing? which some of you have shared. And I really appreciate your engagement and your vulnerability with sharing. Um, and then the second are what are some strategies that have worked? And I know that you guys have shared that too. So in your breakouts, it might be helpful to kind of share some tips and tools. And then three, how can we provide additional port, support? So what are some things that you would like to see more of? Um, I'm happy to you know, provide additional supports and whatnot. This is something, again, that I continue to talk about and discuss in the context of mental health and wellness. Um, so I'm ab absolutely happy to share resources at any time. Um, and I think this will help, hopefully, the group as well. So if um, Kristen and Christine, if you wouldn't mind putting the um, Google Doc uh, link in the chat so that people can have that, that would be great. And, and, and I was saying, Kristen, um, or not Kristen, uh, Awanda, um, that, and Lauren, we didn't write in the, in the doc, were we supposed to? That would be great if you can. And honestly, I'm not going to close it. So if, you know, I, I just think it's helpful to kind of record some things. And I know there were some things in the chat, so the group will, ha will have some information. So you are more than welcome if you guys want to add more things. I mean, please feel free. I'm not going to okay. shut it down. So. I did, I did, I did uh, click on it so I can go on there later. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. yeah especially yeah. in terms of what you want to see more, um, you know, support for from mm -hmm. okay. your different lecture okay. steering committees and academic steering committee members. Okay. I, I like your glasses, Deb Habel. Wherever you are, I don't know where you went. So for, for the sake of time, and I'm happy to, you know, stay a couple minutes after and, and chat if people want to chat a little bit more, but I just, you know, again, want to make sure that we're honoring a boundary too. Um, so just kind of key takeaways and I appreciate everyone's participation again and taking time for yourself. Um, it's important to make self-care simple and doable, like bottom, bottom line, like we need to, you know, do, do simple things for ourselves. So, you know, there's a couple, like I have a little fun visual with some, some different ideas. And I know you guys have had some really great ideas as well. Um, but I guess my top five takeaways for you all, I kind of have like a gems acronym, find your own self-care gems. So first thing is adopting that good enough expectation that's realistic during the, during the pandemic. Um, ergonomics, making sure your workspace works for you. I think that's important to help you so that you're not feeling as fatigued. Um, and movement, making sure that you're stretching or whatever that is, getting just some, some steps in whatever the case is, dancing, and then self-compassion and sleep. And it sounds like a lot of you are being able to have some good quality sleep, but those would be my five things because that's going to help you with enhanced productivity, time management. It's going to, you know, help with stress reduction, all those things too. Um, and I, I just really, again, thank you all for having me. Um, I hope you continue to take good care of yourself and build up your bandwidth so that we can be resilient because we all need each other. Um, we're, and we're all in the same um, 2020 uh pandemic boat. Um, and no one gave us a, uh, a manual of how to 
you know, endure an ongoing crisis. So I just really appreciate you taking the time for, for you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Yep. Thank you, ma'am, very much. Have a good thank day, everybody. You. Absolutely. Hey, Have a good rest of the week. Nice hanging out. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone.